Hi everyone, so today I'm going to try and do this unedited because it saves a lot of work and I'm going to try and do a whole video standing up and I don't really like uh, but I'm trying a new angle um, for the room it looks a little bit more interesting but you can also see a lot more mess um, yeah, so this is part of my plant collection and of course being the window there they all face that way so it's a bit of like you can see them, but you can see the back of the leaves, so not actually the interesting parts. So I've quite a few different things here. Um, I've got um, Monstera deliciosa, um, there's um, Monstera peru, uh, Philodendron, um, Squaliferum, Dermatophyllum, um, Sprucium, <laughs> very sad, um, spider, well one that did get spider mites over a year ago, uh, Alocasia stingray, Alocasia drop drama queen sort of and um, Sabrina it's recovering somewhat Cycads, Monstera, um, SP Philodendron Palmano is a big one you can't see um, Antherium something I can't cry Clenonervium there's an avocado Alocasia Amazonica Alocasia Amazonica um, Alocasia Black Velvet so yeah, it's got a few intro oh and a dragon scale alocasia there too. And then so you can see sort of like where things are and obviously it is a bit messy. And you can see one of the tanks is just placed here. So today's video I thought it'd be appropriate to show you plants because I'm gonna sort of argue my point about um well about sort of why aquascaping isn't all like the only thing in fish keeping and there's more to it well more the topic is that I'm not into aquascaping and I want to tell you why and why it's fine to not be into aquascaping because there's loads of sides to this hobby I don't even really I'm not into even breeding fish I'm into keeping fish because I enjoy keeping fish so obviously a lot of people have seen my aquariums well anyone that watches my channel I mean uh, um, which probably isn't a lot of people, well it isn't a lot of people, I know it's not a lot of people but none of my aquariums are actually scaped at all because when I'm, basically the only time I really put together aquariums is when I literally move house when I move house the only time I have to put everything together is usually pretty short, I don't want to stick my hands in freezing cold water for too long so I literally shove everything in, make as many caves as possible and it's not about aesthetics. Generally the fish in here, they want loads of dividing sort of things so there's not always a bit of, um, it's not like they're exposed uh, to each other because they are territorial. I'm not sure about that like there, I'm not sure if I... Yeah, it's a bit giving me a bit of glare. I'm just gonna... Oh. How's that? It's really dark now. Um, I'm not sure what's better or what's worse, but we'll try this. Um, so yeah, so I would say my crems are always functional and that's what I generally prefer. So they provide the needs, the behavioural and I guess physiological needs of the fish. So loads of hiding places and open spaces for those that need the open spaces, want the open spaces and that's what it's all about. And sometimes I feel aquascape, especially irigami. Um, I think it's irigami is how you pronounce it, which is a Japanese style. Um, or I would guess it could be. Sometimes things will say Japanese and they're not always. Um, like Ryukin and Wakin are, and Demikin I believe, are all Chinese fish imported to Japan and then given Japanese names. But anyway, so that's very sort of sparse, all the fish are in the open and many fishes will feel very exposed. And I guess while this is really popular for shoaling fish, a lot of shoaling fish will only really shoal when they're feeling exposed, likely to predation and stuff like that. So they do want places to retreat to, especially at night you'll find tetras will, and any shoaling fish will go down to the bottom to rest and I guess away from those predators that will come out at night and sort of patrol the middle areas where they're easily found. So a lot of aquascapes can be a bit sparse and that I find a little bit, well, especially for a lot of species and generally it's all about the plants rather than about the fishes and why do you keep fishes because, well, 
fish is a living thing, they're recognised in the UK as now sentient animals, which is important, so their needs need to be met. And you do get aquascapes, loads of different types of aquascapes, and it really depends, and water flamances are well worth looking at, a lot of aquascapes tend to be a little bit on the cooler side. So, generally, as you can see, I, I have done aquascapes. Uh, actually, I'm going to say I have done planted tanks. Um, and yes, I do enjoy the process. I find it stressful. I find art really stressful at times and it really works me up. Um, so I just prefer at home to have everything a bit more relaxed. And if plants survive, they survive. If they don't, they don't. That's fine. It's different power plants you pay a bit more for these like some of these um what was it this guy was a lot the big plowman i um the dragon scale that was 40 this guy was three that was a cutting um 15 i think this one was 20 maybe the monstera was 30. So it's a lot more investment, I guess, in it. And I know plants are living things, but in the aquarium, there's a lot more to it. So, and I find, yeah, the needs of the fish aren't always looked at. One thing I will say about aquarium plants is they are, a lot of them aren't actually aquatic by nature. A lot of them are repairing vegetation. Repair means plants that will sit along the water's edge, maybe have their roots and maybe dipped in a little bit if it's uh, flooding at all, but they're not actually purely aquatic. And this means that actually living in an aquatic environment is really stressful and the plants have to work extra hard to live in that environment. Anubis, for example, Java ferns, I guess even crypts would be. Anubis is, where is an alloy, so a lot of these are alloys. Um, and I don't think there are, as you know, there is an aquatic alloid because duckweed is an alloid, alloid being allocations for the dendrons, whilst there. Um, and I would say, actually, this makes sort of planted tanks very unnatural. And I know they're called nature aquariums, but they're not nature. They're not based on nature, and nature doesn't do, it's not, there are purely aquatic plants, and these sort of plants are. Um, stuff like ballis, nymphia, which is your water lilies, and you'll notice that purely aquatic plants in nature, they're not very well supported out of water. They tend to sort of flop straight away. These guys, they might flop at first. Um, it depends because they do like to be acclimatised to either side. And that's why you get die off when they're suddenly an aquatic or suddenly terrestrial. You do and you can get complete dive off the plant. But yeah, so it's a bit, I lost my trail of thought, the hot a bit. So yeah, aquarium plants aren't actually natural. And a lot of, you'll notice that generally, because it does flop because I that it doesn't have as much support on a truly aquatic plants, don't have as much support. A lot of freshwater ecosystems don't even have plants. Most of my fish are wild caught and most of them have probably never seen plants in their life. They might have seen algae. Algae aren't plants. Um, I would generally say they're not plants. They're more protozoa and if you want to include cyanobacteria, that's a bacteria. That's definitely no plant. Just because it's photosynthetic doesn't make it a plant. So there's a lot of plants that are um, there's a lot of plants that, well, a lot of organisms that aren't plants, and these are what grow really well in freshwater ecosystems. The fast flow environments, it doesn't allow sediment to settle, sand to settle, and this means that the plants don't have somewhere to root. So you might get very basic plants, and these plants won't have true roots like moss, but moss tends to grow sort of at the edge of water, not actually dipped in. And the nutrients tend to be really low. And the best things to exploit this, this is bacteria, um, bacteria, algae, stuff like that will exploit these environments. And they will easily outcompete plants. And it isn't even the substrate for the plants to actually live in. So, and epiphytic plants, epiphyte means in the trees, I believe. I'm no botanist. I do fish. Um, but 
Yeah, so it's not really the most uh, sort of natural at all, really. And yeah, so a lot of it is completely, I would say, unnatural even to have a lot of plants, and then most plants will be sort of bog plants that will come out if there's a sort of low flow environment, like a bog, rice paddy sort of thing, and where the sediment can settle. But it's not really water is not always the greatest sort of environment for plants it's not very great at light can't always go deep down so a lot of plants are reaching up like nymphia water lilies they're reaching up to get the light so a lot of plants don't want to be submerged especially if you've got black water rio zingu this means that they're not adapted always for natural food requirement it makes plants a lot more I would say difficult to look after and a lot of people are very forgiving if they die as I said they don't cost much and a lot of people say they're only plants which you could say that about corals but corals cost an awful lot it's only a coral, it's only a basic animal isn't it? and if jellyfish aren't very smart then what about corals? so other than that generally I find there's this sort of attitude around aquatopes where your aquarium has to be aesthetically pleasing and you know the centerpiece and a lot of it and I will say the more plants you have the more aesthetically appealing an aquarium tends to be anyway so you can shove it all in Dutch style or whatever and it will generally will look nice you don't need artistic or creative talent and I would say you kind of see that a lot where people just shove in plants in any order and it will look nice you just nice you just need a lot of plants and plants it does add up a little bit the more you have and generally i would say that's kind of my bugbear because whenever i've done tanks i've said the more plants i shove in the nicer it will look and generally aquascaping a lot of people will say is an art form so it's difficult to say there because art is up to the sort of the interpretation but say if I painted something and I just did it randomly is it it's not, definitely not purposeful it's a difficult one if you get what I mean and a lot of aquascape I find you get this snobbery where people are like oh I think that should be placed over there it looks so much better and it's always a bit like hmm I prefer just to Everyone has their own way of doing things. Um, and I do think generally aquascapes can be very forceful in art. Generally what I prefer, I don't know, Japanese art I find, although people say oh, it's very perfectionist, it's very sort of straight and not very sort of natural, it's not purposeful almost. It's not like when you do bonsai you make it flow, it look natural it not look play, like purposeful if you get what I mean whereas I find sometimes when people do planting in tanks, even in their gardens it's like plonk plant there, plonk plant there, plonk plant there and the same with stones and hardscape you find that all the time and people tend to be very attracted I guess with art you do you try the known styles first and easy styles and then you move on if you want to or if you can I guess move on to creating your own, creating your own styles, doing something like different minimalist I would say is always minimalism styles are always more difficult because that little imperfection can be seen right away um, and I find a lot of people don't want to break rules they have to, it's an island, it's an origami, it's a Dutch style uh, and sometimes it's nice to just see something different and even in biotopes I, I guess I can't comment with the aesthetics of my tanks entirely but when I have done tanks I wouldn't say they're the best I've, I did do art, I did uh, GCSE art and GCSE uh, graphic design and also AS graphic design so I can do art, I can paint, I can draw, um, I can sculpt, I've got one sculpt I haven't finished for over a year. Uh, well it's just under a year it needs doing but 
it is it's very sort of difficult to say and I guess that's my my biggest bugbear with Axcaping is how I guess it's like it's a bit snobby as well a lot of people will comment and say things like Art, my kind of style of art is I teach myself and I do something different. I don't like to follow things. I don't really actually, when it comes to stuff like that, if I'm painting, I'll do it myself. I ain't going to read a tutorial or watch a tutorial. I'm going to try it myself and try different styles. Just that's the way I guess I am. And I think that gives you a lot more freedom to do something different. I might, if I can set up that tank down there, I might do it properly planted, but not much. And I find another thing is Command of Colour, obviously. That's really difficult with colours. You've only got green, bright red, brownish red, pinkish. So it is a bit difficult. But I just think with aquariums, I guess the style of it, it shouldn't be so big to make sure oh, that everyone should have the freedom to style the tank they, the way they want as long as the fish's needs are met. It doesn't, and there shouldn't be this sort of pedestal, so if you're really good at, um, if your tanks are really aesthetically appealing, they're a lot better than others, there's a lot more to it and it's not all about a, an aesthetically pleasing tank doesn't mean it's suitable for the fish that are in it. And, well yeah. I don't know how my message is getting across really, um, and I can be a bit of an, I guess an art snob, I don't know, <laughs> like when I go to galleries I'm like, wow, well, some artists I'm like, oh that's nice, and others I'm like, don't see it, I, um, and that's how I see aquariums when it comes to using aquariums as art. I think it's very difficult to do art with living things. It's easier with gardens and bonsai because there's a lot more sculpting you can do. You can't sculpt a fish. Well, you can groom a fish, but it doesn't really apply to the same sort of thing. And there seems to be a lot less people wanting to do different styles, being a bit more free when it comes to aquariums as opposed to gardens. Gardens, there's new fashions all the time on how to style your garden. Um, Whereas in aquariums, it seems like it's very set and people are very set in each style. And I'm not really active in aquascaping things. Oh, I understand biology of plants or botany. Um, but it's not my thing. And, to, and uh, I just uh, am not interested in this tank. I do not plan on fertilising. I do... And this has a pretty hardy bunch, you can't kill crips. Um, fish might dig it up. And yeah, so I might, I do need to do a video on planting with goldfish, but I've lost a lot of the photos of tanks I did, really planted tanks with goldfish. And um, also with plex, because there's a lot of misconceptions about what plex eat. Um, Plex meaning lower carids, the majority are detritivores or algivores. Most aren't even found around plants. Most actually won't eat plants. They eat algae and stuff like that, photosynthetic microbes. And I think the large majority of those that are blamed for eating the plants, it's not the fish, it's lack of nutrients, lack of the right sort of habit thing for, for plants because plants do show they are organisms that do show when they're unhappy and it does take time so, sometimes some of these so it, well plants do age as well Anubis I find like many arrows it will die off um, old leaves will die off so you get leaves that are different ages to others I think so for an example this is a uh, three year old leaf and this is no this must be one years old and this is just it's drama queen plant so I'm trying to get it to recover I might chop it all down and just go to bulb um but yeah you get they do plants do age plants do die uh, there's a lot to it um, a lot of plants will reproduce when they're unhappy so flowering can be a real 
stress response and I would assume that is in Anubis so being in a new environment really stresses out the plant or something's changed um, and then you've got stuff like jar ferns that produce babies maybe that baby is more than just is chucking them out um, ferns do have very complex life cycles for plants they go through different um, well, different stages so um, you get different generations I would assume it's the same for these um, actually I'm not sure because I don't know where the other generation would sit um, in ferns if you don't know and I'm waffling on here sorry uh, ferns will have a uh, gametophytic generation so that's the actual plant so the plant you see with ferns and then they will reproduce to produce a, a sporophyte no this is the sporophytic generation they will reproduce to produce a gametophytic generation these are like tiny little things that live in the soil and that's how they spread so well and these gametophytic you get males and females and they will pair together well they will produce sperm and eggs and that will produce the next generation which is the sporophytes which is these but they're producing little things out of, so I don't know if they keep the sporophytic um, gametophytic generation actually in the leaves so that would be interesting to look up um, mosses have a cool way which is why they need to be so wet all the time or a cool way of breeding um, other than also the structure of them they're, they're not very sort of strong structure and this is I am so behind I haven't done plants for the last well, I haven't done plants properly in a few years um, well at uni so yeah and then you get really cool plants like ginkgo but mine are all at my parents house anyway I should finish this now before I go waffling on about random things because I could talk about plants a long time not as long as I could talk about fish but plants are still cool and house plants do look epic around fish tanks just this is such a dark spot it's south facing but Obviously that wall there blocks a lot of it and I guess a big ZZ plant but we'll have to see. Anyway, thank you for watching.